Six undeniable signs a narcissist is cheating on you. Narcissists are masters of deception and deception detection, so you can nearly never know what they're up to behind your back. You can tell anything is wrong if you pay attention to the hints they leave behind. They claim you made it all up, accuse you of cheating, and bury the proof, while in reality, it's they who are delusional. So, how can you know whether your narcissistic partner is genuinely being unfaithful? Let's see if we can pick out any clues in this episode by carefully examining the signs. Greetings and please do make yourself at home. In today's episode, we addressed six signs that your narcissistic partner may be cheating on you. If you found it interesting and want to learn more, you can click the bell icon to subscribe to this channel and be alerted any time new content is added. Recent changes I've made to the site. If you like this episode of the podcast and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe and follow the channel where it was released. First, they make it crystal clear that they will not stand for any form of dishonesty. They're dropping signals that they might not be who or what they claim to be. They commonly voice their distaste for liars. They talk openly about the suffering they've been through because of their ex's infidelity. First, you'll feel more compelled to aid them if you portray yourself as the rescuer rather than the one in need of assistance. They'll go on and on about it until you finally accept the fact that this person is, in fact, quite loyal. They aren't capable of stooping to such low lengths. In preparation for their future dishonesty, they are currently manipulating and brainwashing you. They want you to believe that this individual simply cannot make that choice. They'll never take this path because it requires them to perform the one thing they detest the most. That's completely counter to who they are as a group. In reality, it's the polar opposite and a slap in the face to their dignity if you do that. They would never, ever do such a heinous sin. But the truth is that you'll be just as ready for it. Instead, you find yourself believing what they say. In this way, they will always be able to say that you are wrong, regardless of what you find out about them or how compelling your proof is. The solid foundation, since I'm not someone who just chooks. I'm not going to be a cheater since I have such a strong aversion to the behavior. Now the question is, where do we arrive? No way are you saying that. Either you're cheating on me right now, or you're making it up to make excuses for your behavior. Second, they are notorious for cancelling last minute and going missing for days, so you may go without hearing from them for a while. Having sex, hanging out, and treating them like their partner, you know, the only, the way they should be treating you only because you have to be loyal towards them, are all things they should not be doing while they are cheating on you with someone they term an escort or a fresh supplier. Such devotion has sadly all but disappeared. They do everything with them and forget about you because they no longer think of you at all. Narcissists often prey on the vulnerable because of their inflated sense of self-importance. Whatever helps them stay alive in the now is the reality for them. When individuals stop caring about something, it's usually because they no longer find it valuable. They have no interest in reuniting with you. No one seemed to care about how this person could react if they found out about my conduct. Imagine how they must be feeling. If they found out I was cheating on them, how would they react? They haven't even considered that possibility. No one even thinks to entertain the idea. The time to act is now. They are so engrossed in what they are doing that they completely disregard you in favour of their own enjoyment. Then, after a few days have passed, they either call or show up again, claiming that they were in an accident, or that this terrible thing happened, and that nasty thing happened, and that's why they had to cut you off, and they were gone to manipulate you, or that they simply vanished. To this day, they continue to live in blissful ignorance of the repercussions their actions have brought upon themselves, thanks in large part to weaponization of compassion. Third, 
They deny being worried about their sexual health and largely disregard it. But you keep getting worried about it. When you try to confront them about it, they completely change the subject and accuse you of cheating, even though they were never loyal to begin with. You go to the doctor because you feel sick and discover you have a sexually transmitted virus. Then they use the discovery of your worry to make you feel guilty for cheating on them, even though you know deep down that you didn't. The end result of this is diminished confidence and a growing sense that something is seriously wrong with your mental health. You are shown unflinching support for this person. Your faithfulness to your spouse throughout this marriage has been unwavering. They're the reason you've been able to control your urges and avoid doing anything nafty. But now they have you fooled into thinking that you are to blame for the strain on the marriage. To accuse one's victim of being the one who attacked and then denies that anything untoward happened. It's typical of those types to act in such a way. They claim credit for your efforts, then attack you and finally blame you while claiming victim status. This is so unbelievable that it's almost funny. Did you ever encounter this? Let us know how you feel about this subject in the comments area. Fourth, their sexual behavior might change. Perhaps there will be a rise in sexual activity. New sexual positions may also be introduced for use in education and practice. Prepare for the onslaught of goods. On the other hand, the situation could flip and force you to engage in sexual activities you've never tried before. Perhaps they will settle into a pattern of chronic miserliness. The couple may wish to try out other sex positions or have more sexual experiences. This wasn't always the situation though. They began to act differently and eventually began to hide it. When you put it that way, you have to start wondering. My question is, why am I experiencing these emotions? Could it be that they secretly fancy me? They are now taking their relationship seriously after realizing its significance. Or perhaps I do not understand things. They manipulate you so that you don't suspect anything else is happening. Just when you think things are starting to look better, they drop another bomb on you. One may assume that a person has undergone a transformation after witnessing them grow emotionally close to them after enduring a horrific event. The truth is that they want to look good in front of their possible new supply. Therefore, they are trying out new sexual positions and asking for more sex with you. They want to get them to submit by promising them a degree of sexual pleasure they'd never known before. Therein is the meat of the issue. And with enough repetition, they eventually learn to hold it in. Then you'll start wondering what the heck went wrong. Could it be that I'm missing something obvious? Moreover, did I make things better or worse? So, what exactly is going on here? Plus, you probably already know what will happen if you confront them. They blamed you for everything that went wrong. They think you've lost your sexual interest in them. Perhaps you've altered your physical look or gained weight. Yes, this did occur. I can't continue working with you because of your this weakness and that defect. The truth is that they are head over heels in love with this other person and couldn't care less about you. Having reduced you to an inanimate object by their exploitation, they have abandoned you now that you are no longer useful to them. The fifth possible explanation is that they will start grooming differently. They start to groom more often and become more concerned with their looks, making them look younger than they are. To be sure, there is nothing improper about trying to improve one's appearance. Narcissists that engage in this behavior, however, develop an unhealthy preoccupation with their outward appearance, including their size, shape, and how others perceive them. They have a constant routine of examining their looks in mirrors and grooming themselves. The hair, the body, the lips, the facelift, the lack of wrinkles, and everything else are all considered. She has reached the point of total insanity, verging on body dysmorphic disorder. 
there is a noticeable change in them, as if they morphed into a person suffering from body dysmorphia. In their minds, the only reason to watch their diet and exercise is to show off to this one individual. If a person has somatic or sexual narcissism, it will show in the way they treat themselves and others. Previously it would have been subtle, but now it would be much stronger. They obsess over every detail of their appearance in the hopes of finding a companion who will fall for their charms. They also, foolishly and comically, believe they are much younger than they actually are. It's humorous that they're in their fifties yet act like they're in their twenties, but it's still bizarre, unacceptable, and an indication of their age. It's hard to believe that someone who looks to be in their forties could be this ignorant as to believe they're still in their twenties. Because they fear the truth that they are inevitably diminishing, aging, and losing their charisma, they refuse to realize that life and aging are unavoidable processes. They deceive themselves into believing that their age is much less than it actually is. However, despite their efforts, it has not materialized. People frequently discover that cosmetic procedures, such as a facelift, do not enhance their appearance after they have been tried. So, have you run into this? Have you witnessed such conduct from the narcissist you're with? In such a case, please elaborate in the box below. 6. They brush off accusations of infidelity by saying that those who make them are only adversaries or jealous ex-lovers. It's over when they're caught with the evidence. That's an impregnable base for them to try and topple. They did a complete round once more. To this, the standard well that was my ex response is appropriate. This crazy ex was still giving me a hard time. And unlike me, she has used Photoshop to modify these photos. This is someone I have never dated. No idea what you're talking about, man. That is totally not the case. The fact that it's so costly is due to their own innovation. The only difference between you and them is that you are exactly like them. You don't believe me then. They start crying, so you'll feel bad for them, and they're back in the victim-blaming cycle. Know that I am a terrible person. I feel like everyone is plotting against me. Almost no one will give me some personal space. I don't know how to react or where to run. They go to such extremes to hide the harm they've already committed. A kind person like yourself may fall for a con more than once. You eventually learn the truth, but at first, it's easy to get into their explanation and convince yourself that they were innocent. It's possible the ex made up the whole thing to make them look bad, or there could be a deeper plan at play. It's possible that the situation isn't as dire as it seems at first glance. Maybe it's all in your head. So, to counter their gaslighting, you gaslight yourself. They make it seem like these stories are made up to trick you. These claims are entirely made up by the haters who view the world through the narcissist's distorted prism of paranoia and perceive everyone as the adversary. People who believe everyone else is out to get them are often the ones that attack everyone they come into contact with. These are some of the more obvious and subtle signs of infidelity and how to spot a narcissist and prevent them from escaping the repercussions of their betrayal. If you found this episode to be informative, please let me know by leaving a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and sign up for my channel. In the upcoming one, we can have a conversation. For the time being, start making repairs. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Whenever I do a video in the future, I'll make it a point to make sure the explanations are easy to understand and helpful. In the box down below, I'd like to give your take on the matter. Your interest is really appreciated, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch. May you all enjoy today.